Hi there and welcome to Cars, Drones, Computers. Today we're going to be going over the DJI Osmo Pocket Wireless Module. We'll do an in-depth review and a teardown of it too to see what's inside, so stay tuned. If you're curious about where I got the camo skin for this, you can pick those up on Amazon. The link will be down in the description below. These here seem really good quality and so far there's no wear on them and the cut of the vinyl is extremely precise and everything matches up perfectly. So as you can see, this has the QR code sticker that's found on the side of it, just like the controller wheel has. So I'll be taking that off. This one's white. It has a nice soft rubber bottom. It has pretty good anti-slip properties. There's a USB-C that protrudes out of the center right here. And there's also a USB-C for input. So if you want to charge this while you are filming with the wireless module. So once you have the wireless base plugged in, go ahead and go to your phone or tablet that you're using. This is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A, I believe. Go to your wireless networks and select Osmo Pocket. Now if it asks you for a password, go ahead and type 1234-1234 as that's the default password. Also, you want to go ahead and have the DJI MIMO app downloaded. And right there, it's telling me that internet may not be available. So if you're using it on a device that has no SIM card, then you're not going to be able to have internet, at least while you're running the wireless function. So go ahead and hit the DJI MIMO app, and that will open. And it'll say right here, device connected, and you can hit camera. Once you have it set up, you'll see there's this little white dot right here in the corner, and you can press and hold that. And move it around and that becomes your gimbal control. You can also select an item right here like this controller wheel and it will active track it. Now if I move that controller wheel somewhere else it'll automatically track it. Go ahead and put it back and if you want to get rid of the active tracking just simply hit the X in the upper right corner and you'll be good to go there. You can also use this little slider to control the white balance of your picture. Let me go ahead and turn that back down went a little too high. If you have a, a tablet with USB-C, a iPad, or a phone that you're hooking this Osmo to, you can pretty much do everything you can do with that. You can do it right here. So some of the advantages you'll also find is if I was to go to time lapse and then I select right up here and let's do a path. Now I can do four points for my motion lapse where if you're just trying to use the Osmo Pocket itself, you can only do two. So using your phone or using the wireless module allows you to do four, which increases and expands your options of filming. Also, if you want to go into pro mode, with this wireless device, it's really easy. So now you can have your histogram, you can uh, use your overexposure tip, you have noise reduction, which I like to turn that off, so it helps the audio just a little bit. And you can use all of those settings that you are not able to access inside the device. So as you can see, this has quite a bit of nice uses. It would definitely be good for some of those people that don't have USB-C on their phones. I'm not sure about app compatibility and hopefully they keep updating the DJI MIMO app. And that way, I know a lot of people have had a lot of issues. So for me, it's been improving because when I first got this device, the tablet didn't work and then they've updated the app and now things work. Um, I've also, they keep updating the firmware on the Osmo Pocket itself, which is making it a little bit better. It's also nice that this, uh, little accessory mount that they have. If you have it on a tripod or any kind of uh, GoPro style mount, you're able to put this wireless base on and control it remotely. So that's pretty cool too. Me personally, I like to use the Osmo Pocket with the wireless module and the control wheel. At the same time, quite a bit of stability to it. This thing definitely doesn't want to fall over. If you just have the control wheel on and you're setting it up, it's more likely to fall over. Now I have tried to hook it up via Android to Bluetooth and I have not been very successful. I know that Wi-Fi inherently has a little bit more bandwidth, so I would probably recommend doing Wi-Fi over Bluetooth and also because Wi-Fi just gives you a lot more range, whereas Bluetooth generally maxes out at 30 to 35 feet. Another interesting feature is this little groove right here. And when you plug it into your device, your microphone holds right there, which lines up with that groove. So that way it doesn't completely mute the secondary microphone. So there's one microphone on the bottom and then one right here underneath the control wheel, or if I remove that, you can see it maybe a little bit more clearly and it sits right there. So it's nice that they at least thought about that. It's a, it's a pretty well engineered product. Do I recommend that you spend the $60 for the wireless module or spend $110 for the whole expansion kit? I think that if you're wanting to do pretty nice motion lapses or time lapses and you want to be able to monitor this device remotely in any way, shape or form, this far beats hooking it up to your phone. You don't have to worry about all of the sag that you get from the phone mount and uh, a lot of the problems I've even noticed with my uh, Samsung Galaxy S8 by putting in this little module, I definitely have some slop. Sometimes I get some random disconnections and that is a problem. And I also know that some people using the lightning port have experienced similar issues. Where I live, there's a lot of Wi-Fi interference, so I've only been able to get right around 50 feet of range with this thing. Sometimes even down as 30 to 35 feet. And I thought first that I was just connected via Bluetooth, but no, it was the wireless signal. So, I mean, that's it's all, your mileage is going to vary about how far you can get with this thing. I know some people have gotten over 200 feet, so it really depends on where you are and what kind of 
uh, signal noise there is in your environment. So let's go ahead and tear this device apart right here and see what's inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up this device. So to do that, you're going to need to start by removing this soft rubber ring. It's just stuck on by some adhesive. So get a small screwdriver, get it to the point where you can peel it, and then peel it off just like that. Underneath, you'll find four small Phillips head screws. So go ahead and remove those. Flip it over upside down. The bottom comes off. And here we get the first look at the underside of the wireless chip. So right here is the wireless chip. There's an antenna here and an antenna right over here. Here's the rear USB Type-C. Now let's go ahead and push down from the top on the USB-C port. And we can drop the entire PCB right out the bottom. So as you can see, this is the tall USB Type-C that inserts into the Osmo Pocket. Right up here is your front LED that is green when it's connected and red when it's disconnected. And right here is also the rear USB. Now it looks to me like they have a little bit of conformal coating just here on the top of the device. I notice there's nothing underneath and there's no seal right here around the bottom ring. So definitely don't put this thing in water or drop it or anything like that because uh, probably gonna cause some issues. But that's good to see at least for things that might drain right into this port right here that they give you a little bit of protection. So that right there is what costs you $60. Also in here, you can see this is the four little spots that the screws screw into. So they definitely have a little bit of reinforcement around all of these things. So hopefully that holds up and they have a little bit of more transparent plastic right here for the LED light to shine through on the front. So let's go ahead, reinsert this back in here. I figured I'd go ahead and include this guy just in case you guys ever get your device wet or get something in there and you can't quite get it out. Well, this is how you take it apart. So that concludes my review. Uh, thank you all for watching this episode of Cars, Drones, Computers, where we went over the Osmo Pocket Wireless model. And please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Go ahead and smash that like button if you liked today's video. And I'll see y'all in the next episode. Bye for now.